Hello, everybody. So my name is Daniel Hamilton. I first off, I want to thank uh, the PMA and their organization for having me today. I'm going to talk about interactive planning and how we deployed this process out to Worley globally. So a little bit about myself. I've been with Jacobs Worley around 15 years now. Um, if you may or may not know, Worley Parsons acquired Jacobs ECR Energy Chemicals Resource Division in 2019. At that time, we became Worley after the two companies combining. So most of my experience comes from the oil and gas chemicals industry. I've executed many projects within the company, including projects that include engineering procurement and even follow through construction. <clears throat> so I started my career off working in construction, doing mostly maintenance turnaround construction projects. I do value that experience and the ones that showed me planning as it's been very rewarding for my career and development. So let's get into it. So Worley has around 60,000 employees worldwide. And when we rolled IAP out to the company in 2020, we had around 500 project control staff attend at that time to learn about interactive planning. So this process was new to many, but not new to everyone within the organization. So first off, I really wanna talk about uh, the governance and IAP requirements and what projects require to do interactive planning sessions. So this will talk about where interactive planning sessions are required and when it's also just recommended for projects. So let's see the next slide here. So this is project framing and requirements. So this slide represents framing and requirements for projects to conduct interactive planning sessions. So Worley has four separate project criteria, which is defined by project contract value or project risk. So for major mega projects, Anything greater than $150 million reimbursable contract value range or greater than $100 million lump sum, it's required to do man, uh, interactive planning sessions. So that is a mandatory uh, project selection that is required to do interactive planning. Uh, next, you'll see large projects. So this is $15 million to $150 million reimbursable or US $10 million to $100 million. Uh, lump sum, these are also recommended uh, that it is mandatory to do interactive planning sessions. And then medium projects, which is 2 million to 15 million reimbursable, 1 million to 10 million lump sum, these are also mandatory to do interactive planning sessions as well. And then lastly, you see small projects, anything less than $2 million reimbursable or less than 1 million lump sum. It's a, a recommended practice. Um, it's not mandatory, even though most of these projects do do interactive planning sessions, they just may not have the attendance from a lot of the stakeholders that are required for the medium and up projects. So usually this is the PM and the scheduler sitting down building the level two-ish, maybe level three schedule for the small projects, and it's not a full blown out interactive planning session like the big projects. Okay. So interactive planning and why? So why do we do interactive planning? So the biggest objective is to establish a project schedule baseline. Um, this is to discuss interfaces and execution, identify critical activities. It ensures buy-in and uh, provides accountability for all the stakeholders. It creates a group problem solving and uh, allows us to have recovery plans. Uh, if issues come up, we can identify and correct these during these sessions. Uh, creates team building atmosphere, uh, facilitates in creating more realistic schedules. Uh, this requires full participation and management support of the organization within the Worley project team. Uh, it's imperative that all disciplines and project services come prepared to this meeting and to have a meaningful session. So all project team members need to be open and honest in identifying all known risk, potential risk, issues, and barriers. And again, uh, the end of this with all these objectives is to have a baseline schedule and issue a schedule of quality uh, for project execution. So I want to jump into a little bit about defining interactive planning and what it means to, to Worley and to, to even others. So developing a schedule, a project schedule the Worley way. Um, you're going to first off, we're going to see here was what we call our business process map. Uh, this map shows the steps to create a baseline schedule and to get a product we can issue to a project team to execute the schedule. There are various additions to this business process map, business process map 
uh, that go into further detail, but we want to focus in on the green highlighted one here, interactive planning. Um, it's our first step in developing a project schedule. So this map throughout a whole life cycle of a project uh, must be followed by the project team for every schedule that is required for a project. So interactive planning was an additional step uh, created during our harmonization efforts with Jacobs to Worley, Worley Parsons. So when we became Worley as one company, uh, we kind of refined this business process map uh, for our organization. Um, so both companies did utilize interactive planning sessions, but it was never a step in the business process map. So this was a new one we added uh, in our harmonization effort of the two companies. Uh, jumping over a little bit to about schedule assurance. So this checklist is to be used as a reference document for validation of the schedule. So the checklist you see on the slide here uh, is the many steps a planner must take to ensure a schedule is developed in a correct manner. We ensure that we use this checklist uh, to make sure we go through the correct process of developing a schedule, conduct review cycles, and add assisting documents to be developed to go with the schedule, such as a schedule basis. So the checklist helps the project planner focus on what they need to do to get to an overall baseline schedule that we can issue to our customers. At the end of this checklist, we issue this an overall baseline execution book. So in this checklist, you can see the first step here is to complete an interactive planning session. If this is not completed, the planner cannot proceed to the next step. So it's imperative that these steps are followed in our organization. And this is signed off by a project management representative. So interactive planning, the definition and objectives of what this means. Uh, so interactive planning is considered a worthy best practice and our standard within our policies. It is a methodology used on projects to engage stakeholders in a facilitated setting. It is to promote creative thinking and demonstrate out of the box thinking. Uh, the process focuses on development of an achievable plan and uh, buy-in from all team members. The output of the process is the beginning of an integrated project schedule uh, that highlights key constraints and uh, identifies major issues that may uh, impact project execution. So these sessions, should include all major stakeholders, including engineering leads, project services, construction, customers, and even operations at times. Uh, the interactive planning process can and should be used throughout the life cycle of the project and can be used to micromanage difficult tasks for areas, systems, and multidiscipline interaction. So interactive planning can be used to run what-if scenarios, conduct schedule reviews, and incorporate schedule changes to see the overall impacts. Uh, interactive planning can assist with understanding obligations to meet our contractual obligations. Uh, for interactive planning, this process can assist in problem solving, promotes engagement from stakeholders, aligns the team on project execution. And then just a little blurb I've learned over the years that if you can make these interactive planning sessions fun, uh, the, the team seems more engaging and will be better to offer uh, their timelines, logic durations, et cetera. Uh, implementation and applicability. So Worley has seven phases of a project's life cycle. Uh, identify, evaluate, define, design, build, commission and handover, and asset management. So throughout any phase of these projects uh, or a change within one of these phases, we can use interactive planning. Uh, interactive planning can be successfully used in all phases, uh, basically throughout the completion of execution even including construction. So the picture here shows all opportunities within Worley uh, phases of a project to use interactive planning. Uh, interactive planning can be successful in all types of projects, including even turnaround planning to get to that micro detail, uh, advanced work packaging planning, um, where you break your schedules up into areas. We use that to uh, in NetPoint to actually break our schedules into areas and, and plan these in NetPoint. And then also portfolio planning. We've uh, started to do portfolio planning more and more utilizing NetPoint. So a little bit of applicability continued and I wanted to maybe change gears here for portfolio planning and how we've done portfolio planning within Worley. Uh, so we find 
that interactive planning can be pretty successful in planning a customer's portfolio. In the past, we've noticed in our industry a lack of planning for required or wish list projects from a customer in their portfolio. So with interactive planning, we can help our customers achieve and plan to initiate projects and adjust their cash flow to facilitation, help facilitation of awarding projects on time and effectively execute them using our interactive methods for portfolio planning. So this part of the presentation may be interesting to many of you, and I have to give credit where credit's due to on this one. So uh, I learned this process from actual PMA member, um, Mike Brown, about 10 years ago, just to give a little story here, uh, flew down to Houston. Uh, it was the first time I met Mike in person, um, flew down to Houston and introduced me to portfolio planning. Uh, to be honest, I was completely lost when he was showing me this because it is a different type of scheduling than actually scheduling just one project. You're taking a combination of 50 to hundreds of projects and rolling them up into a portfolio plan. So this was a completely new technique of scheduling to me. And, and I do appreciate Mike flying down to me and, and sharing his, uh, his experience with me and, and showing me how to do this uh, correctly. Uh, so I do have to say portfolio planning was a learning curve, and it's a whole different process from just typical EPC planning. Uh, so this is a process where customer and clients present us with uh, all their projects over a period of time. And we go through a process of taking each project, resource loading them with dollars or hours or both. Um, after that, we sit down with the customer and plan their projects uh, and level their projects using NetPoint. Uh, when we move the projects in NetPoint, we can see the histogram, which is showing dollars or hours to start to level out. And uh, this is becoming a standard practice within Worley. So here, I just wanted to show you how the first step to getting to uh, a NetPoint schedule. So this is a template, a distribution template where you enter a value of a project and it distributes it over the phases of the project. As you can see at the top there, phase one, two, three, four, five, four, purchasing, construction, all have dollar values that we take this template and load it into a net point schedule. All right, so uh, this is the actual net point schedule. Uh, if you take that template in the previous slide and you add each activity in net point to represent a phase, including approvals, we take this and we load those dollars that that template distributed um, with the dollars or hours or both into each one of these activities. And then this actually will give us a histogram in net point. As you can see here at the bottom of the screen, uh, the green represents that, you know, that we have allocated the correct dollars or hours to these projects. And then we've set limits to these projects to show over allocated uh, hours or dollars to the to the customer so that we can get into the interactive planning session with the customer. They see all their projects loaded into the net point schedule and they can see where they have problem areas of spending too much cash or hours are being spent uh, on projects. And this allows us to level these schedules out, move schedules um, if they're not of priority to different areas or different time periods to level out the whole portfolio plan. And then this lastly is the uh, one of many reports you can get out of portfolio planning. So um, this can basically show cash flow. We can show hours distributed over time. Um, this really helps the customers identify where they're spending their cash or dollars or hours or uh, understand where their resource requirements, because we find a lot of our customers don't have the resources to uh, put on the projects that they have uh, in their portfolio uh, to support it. So this allows them really to go back to the table and level their schedules out and level their portfolio out. All right. So back into the interactive planning session. So roles and responsibilities. We identified five major roles for conducting interactive planning. So the first is the project manager, which will assure that the interactive planning is conducted at the appropriate stages of a project. It ex he explains, he or she explains the process to a customer and the project team to assure buy-in to the process. The facilitator will conduct the IEP, ensure all participants are given the opportunity to take part 
also manage the proceeding, ensure the process flows sufficiently, and attempt to meet the, the agreed objectives. Uh, the chairman, so this was required for any high risk or mega projects, uh, and it's considered a third party person not directly connected to the project. So this person will bring value as such as lessons learned from other projects. They can challenge the logic, uh, directions of the, of the activities and raise any risk that they may see that could impact project success. The scheduling lead will prepare and provide the materials necessary for the interactive planning session and issue the outcomes such as the schedule, the tables or charts, any uh, deliverable after the planning session. They basically will do the input uh, and deliver the baseline schedule at the end of the day. So the project controls manager, this person will support the facilitator or when, even when designated, the PCM will facilitate the interactive planning session. And then lastly, probably the most important people in the meeting, uh, in my opinion, is the stakeholders. So these people play the biggest active part in the interactive planning session. They're going to prepare and assign a list of activities. They're going to discuss their logic and dates to their deliverables, including their questions and needs. They're really the, the heart of building the schedule and putting the logic durations and the overall timeline together. So these will be people such as your engineering leads, process, piping, mechanical, et cetera, or even construction uh, foremans when they are uh, putting the schedule together. So jumping into benefits. So what, what we have seen for benefits of interactive planning. So benefits of interactive planning. Uh, this allows for discussions and creation of logic, interfaces and project execution. This allows the project team to easily identify critical activities. For example, major critical paths, low float areas and resource limited activities. This helps define the customer responsibilities and expectations. It reinforces that all stakeholders will be accountable for their schedule. And at the end of the day, uh, end of the interactive, knowing that they have added their own deliverables, logic and durations. It also provides a platform uh, where we can identify cost and schedule risk and come up with mitigation plans to overcome that risk. Uh, it helps with overcoming problem solving bringing up lessons learned from past experiences and allows recovery plans if required. Uh, it provides early engagement to the customer to understand the schedule development process and see how the disciplines interfaced uh, to build that schedule. It provides confidence to the customer that the schedule also was not developed in a siloed approach. So it, it also ensures that the customer's expectations and their uh, requirement, contractual requirements are met. Uh, this one of the biggest things we find is it creates team team building uh, atmosphere that allows open and honest conversations around schedule development creates a platform for even more realistic schedules due to the participation from all project team members so as i said before in the slide first off and most important bullet here is the participation and engagement from management and the project team. Without that, the schedule is really just a scheduler putting activities to a schedule um, without participation from the actual key stakeholders that are gonna be delivering and executing these deliverables. Um, without this, the schedule confidence for the development is lowered and could jeopardize the overall schedule quality. Uh, it's imperative that all disciplines and project services identify their scope prior to the IE interactive planning session. This is key as we do not want stakeholders to come unprepared for the interactive planning. We want to make sure that when we start an interactive planning session that we state to the team that we all need to be open and honest about potential risks to the project deliverables that could impact their success. At the end of the interactive planning, we want to ensure that the schedule is completely workable and the overall timeline can be used to establish the schedule baseline. And then lastly, we can use the interactive planning uh, to quantify against any substantial changes that may require a schedule rebaseline. Uh, just a few examples of required input that uh, we tend to like to get from the disciplines or clients or project managers prior to the interactive planning session. 
Um, some major activities that we want to identify, such as start and finish dates for the overall project. We want to have those in mind when we're planning our, our schedule out. Uh, this includes engineering start and finishes, any kind of major procurement items such as long leads, overall construction duration, and then any kind of hard turnaround dates that uh, we're trying to achieve. Uh, we would definitely want to have those prior to an interactive planning session identified. So the team comes in knowing uh, uh, a skeleton of the project schedule. We want to identify customer review cycles. So we want to see uh, how long it's going to take a customer to review such things as PNIDs, our, our vendor data that's coming in. If it's five days, 10 days, a month, or, or six months, we want to identify how long these reviews are going to take because that uh, will impact our, uh, our project success for our disciplines to achieve their de deliverable dates. And then uh, we do make sure that we at least two weeks, maybe a week before our interactive planning session, touch base with the project team members uh the disciplines to make sure that they understand the deliverables they've read the scope of work they know what the overall timeline is that they come to that meeting with their deliverables they understand that their durations uh understand their durations of their deliverables and uh have some kind of interaction with their discipline uh counterparts so that you know we can have a really good meeting and, and get to a project schedule and interactive without debating a bunch of deliverables and what the scope of the work is So uh, tools and methods we use in Worley for interactive planning. This is probably going to be, uh, uh, I mean, you're probably going to understand where we came from and how we got here. And, and the tools and methods that we've used is pretty standard, standard in our industry. So first off, we're going to look here at the wall chart method. Uh, this was used to be the most commonly used method for interactive planning within Worley. So the majority of the people on this uh, conference have either used this or have been a part of this, uh, this method in some form or fashion in your experiences. Uh, we still find or have found that the wall chart method is still effective um, and it still allows multiple participants to place sticky notes on a printed wall chart to define the project timeline at one time. Uh, although this method does require manual input into our schedule software, it gives a great view of the schedule at a summary level. This method of, often requires follow-up sessions in order to define more activities, logic, and confirm those durations based on the team's input. It can be very effective for putting together quick schedules to represent overall project duration. It also allows for multiple IEPs at one time. And for example, if you needed to break the schedule down into areas or further de detail for disciplines, multiple, multiple sessions can be done at one time. So I did a, a comparison of wall chart method versus net point. And I want to show some pros and cons of both. Um, so paper wall chart and stickies, uh, you know, a planner must go and write or the engineering deliver discipline must go and write every sticky note for every deliverable. And most of the time in my experience, we get all finish dates instead of a start and a finish of an activity. Uh, so that doesn't allow us to actually understand where an activity started or allow us to help put logic together in the schedule. I found myself also many times where I got into a wall chart uh, sticky note IEP and the original duration was six months before the interactive. So I said I made a six month wall chart and come to find out when we put all of our activities there, the project was actually eight months. And I find that all the disciplines ran out of room. So all the sticky notes got put at the end of the, the chart and I had no clue what tied to what or when things finished. Uh, so it really uh, didn't achieve the overall goal of putting a schedule together. So we had to do multiple iterations of wall charts uh, or sitting down at a desk trying to figure out what those end dates for the two months that we didn't uh, identify prior to the interactive delay. Um, this process also just requires manual input for each uh, activity. So uh, we use Primavera for our uh, project ex execution scheduling. And so we have to sit down and input each one of these activities manually uh, from a wall chart. And then sometimes if we don't get the project support, a planner has to go in there and, and 
I wouldn't say guess the logic, but sometimes guess the logic and durations of an activity, uh, which doesn't allow for a quality schedule. And then we've also found that doing the wall chart method, depending on project size and how many deliverables are on a project, this could take one to two weeks, even a month to develop an actual schedule that is of quality to get to a baseline schedule. So the timing of developing a schedule after a, an inter, a wall chart method is, is pretty lengthy. Uh, this slide I brought over from when we actually introduced NetPoint to the organization. So this tool uh, was brought over from Jacobs uh, to Worley, uh, and it's used as our digi digital way of conducting interactive planning. So NetPoint is already used in many of our offices and regions. And then due to the work from home nature today, which Worley is a mostly work from home company uh, today due to the COVID, um, it's our most effective way of doing interactive planning now. So this is our most utilized tool to effectively do interactive planning for scheduled development. Um, it's a tool that allowed us to facilitate a full electronic interactive planning session uh, that can be done completely in a virtual setting. Uh, this allows for our participants to focus on discussing deliverables and logic without the need of wall charts, banners, sticky notes, uh, and inconclusive logic ties. This method also provides instantaneous feedback to the team as they can see live logic um, and duration impacts on the project. And then when more, when you move an activity or increase an activity's duration for uh, it impacts the overall scheduled timeline immediately. This tool is also uh, a direct import for us to Primavera so that we can reduce our time of issuing a first draft uh, project schedule to the project team. Uh, this project, the schedule can be printed basically immediately after a, an interactive planning session. Uh, so there's no manual input into P6, wait two, three weeks to actually see the schedule. Uh, we can basically print this out. The disciplines can go back to their to their desk or uh, to their office and have a schedule basically ready to be executed right at a net point while the scheduler uh, imports it into Primavera, cleans it up and gets it for a first pass issue. Uh, so we found the value of net point uh, reducing that timeline from getting an interactive planning session kicked off, building the schedule, getting a first pass schedule to the disciplines uh, reduced by a lot. So this is just a little bit of comparison method from that wall chart method I spoke about earlier uh, to actually go into NetPoint. So overall, we've reduced costs from our planning and even our project team uh, attendance uh, and input from 40 to 60 hours. So it's a huge, a huge savings in time from project teams uh, having to sit with the scheduler to, to get their deliverables on a schedule and issued out. Uh, so our first pass schedule is complete within minutes of an interactive planning session completion instead of the one to two weeks from a sticky note. Uh, this has allowed our work from home capability to be improved. So like I said before, we do all of our interactive planning sessions virtually now. Um, and NetPoint is our tool of choice to do those. Uh, graphically easier to read. So compared to a P6 schedule, I think everybody on this conference knows that reading a Gantt chart out of a P6 schedule can be pretty cumbersome, get lost in the logic, get lost in the activities on a Gantt chart. Uh, NetPoint has proven itself to us that it is graphically easier to read, to follow logic, to move things real time, the immediate uh, effect you see downstream um it is huge a huge reward in that uh, it allows us to preload fragments such as templates uh so that when we go into the interactive planning session a lot of this stuff is already built out for us uh we go in and just adjust durations or sometimes even logic between the, the disciplines uh, but it allows us to have good templates already established to do these interactive planning sessions uh it's allowed us to resource load so as we build our deliverables and assign durations to our activities, we can see the histograms and net point move uh, our hours around. And, and when we start uh, pushing, you know, process delays an activity and it pushes on a piping activity, we start seeing resource impacts uh, during that interactive planning session. 
And one of the most beneficial things lastly here is that NetPoint is a one-to-one -one import to P6. So uh, we do do a little bit of cleanup in P6, but the amount of effort from going a wall chart method to a pyramid virus schedule is a huge reduction in time from NetPoint to P6 and is a huge benefit to the project team. Uh, this is just a quick uh, template, I would say, that uh, we tend to, I, I actually put together to just to do a show and tell here. So a little bit of oil and gas logic uh, from disciplines. Uh, this is what a typical type schedule from NetPoint looks for like for us. We have on the left here, our legend, which is each discipline is a color to, uh, assigned a color uh, for their input into the schedule. And then we build these schedules very detailed in NetPoint. So even sometimes we go to the level three, even level four at times, I've seen in our organization have thousands of activities in these NetPoint schedules. And I know ten, when you tend to get to that level of detail, um, it's hard to really see where you're at, uh, even using a NetPoint schedule. So we've learned to summarize our schedules by disciplines uh, to one, improve performance of the net point, uh, but two, to really show where start and end dates are for an overall discipline's uh, timeline. Uh, so I wanted to jump over and just do a quick demonstration, uh, three to four minute demonstration of how we use net point, uh, where we see the benefit, um, and then give you a flavor of, you know, kind of a large schedule template from net point. So as you can see here, um, it's a little busy here, but uh, I would say this is level two-ish, three-ish type schedule for engineering procurement construction. And like I said, we define our phases uh, by phase three, four, five, et cetera, and on and forward. So for defined phase, that's typically where we start our interactive planning sessions. We get a lot of feed defined type projects. So most of our detail and interactive planning starts within this phase. Uh, and we really try to get down to as much as detail as we can in these schedules. And like I said, each discipline is assigned a color. And then when we get into the interactive planning sessions, we either one, start from scratch and the disciplines input uh, their, their activities one by one, or we start from a template uh, that's already defined with logic and durations, and we just get in here and adjust durations. Uh, the benefit I see when I first open this up um, from project views uh, that have never seen NetPoint before, I, I, I tend to show this template because one, it's all logically tied and it gives a pretty good flavor of how NetPoint works. So. Um, when I show projects that have never seen NetPoint, I tend to start moving things around and, and I start getting big and, and the wow factor comes in that when I move an activity, it starts pushing on other disciplines, as you can see here. And then if I delay activities too much, you're showing the downstream effect of detail engineering and even construction, they start turning red uh, to show that one, you're not making your end date that you originally put on the schedule, and two, it starts identifying critical paths as well. So engineering leads, project managers, when you initially show them this, the wow factor comes in that, hey, we have a logically tied schedule, and if I delay something, I'm going to impact someone else downstream or the overall project timeline. Uh, that has been one of the most effective things in our project scheduling uh, doing net point interactive in inter interactive planning sessions, uh, you know, in even increasing uh, duration of an activity, you can impact the overall project schedule. And even at times, I find sometimes in interactive planning sessions that we just can't make the end date that we originally thought, and things start turning red, and we have to go back and. Uh, reduce durations, or that really is how long it's gonna take us. And we just have to, uh, that's why it's imperative to have the customer client in these meetings to show them that, hey, uh, our durations are extending what we thought the original plan was gonna take. 
And then I also find that sometimes customers say originally their reviews are going to take five days and then we get into the interactive planning session and they want to review uh, you know, vendor data or a quote from a piece of equipment and it takes them instead of five days, it takes them 20 days and it immediately starts uh, affecting overall project timeline due to, due to review cycles. Um, so yeah, this was just a quick show and tell of when we introduce NetPoint to our projects, we tend to like to use this type of, uh, type of level of detail to do show and tells and also show them how the logic interacts with each discipline because most of our project managers and project engineers are so used to wall chart methods that they uh, sometimes don't like the, uh, the change of pace from wall chart, met wall chart methods until they see this uh, tool net point start you know, moving their activities and they can input their, their logic and duration starts and finishes and how it impacts uh, other disciplines. And then we like to show the histogram here, which is also another uh, benefit of doing these of where resources are most used in the project. Uh, and this, a lot of projects like to use this histogram as well, but you do have to initially set these activities up with hours or dollars or, or uh, what's defined in the project to get these histograms. Yeah.